So lastly, we look at the maximum power transfer theorem. Maximum power transfer to the load connected to a circuit when the load impedance is the complex conjugate of the circuit's output impedance. So we, we saw this before uh, in uh, ET111 uh, where we talked about changing the sign of the, the, uh, the reactive value and it becoming the complex conjugate. The resistances are equal to the magnitude, the reactances are equal to the magnitude, but opposite in sign. The output impedance is effectively Thevenin's equivalent impedance viewed from the output terminals when Z sub L is the complex conjugate of Z out maximum power is transferred from the circuit to the load with a power factor of 1. An equivalent circuit then with its output impedance is shown in the diagram. So we can see here we've got some source resistance, some resistance or impedance out, and an impedance that becomes the load. It could, the load can be numerous things in uh, the world of audio. Uh, it, it typically is a your speaker. So if we look at this example, we can see what happens then when we vary the frequency of the source. So in this case we've got a resistor from the source. Our source is 10 volts, a varying frequency that starts off at 10 kHz, a capacitance, and then our load here that is really consists of a winding resistance and an inductor that is the winding in a speaker. So you could take a look at this. Um, you can see we move from 10 to 30k, to 50k, to 80k, and what happens here, these are all the relationships that we've seen to date, as we get closer and closer to resonance, in this case we approach 50k hertz, we end up with values of 318 and 314 for our reactances. So this is telling us we're getting closer and closer to resonance. 50.3 is actually the value at resonance. So when we go through and calculate in each case the reactances, the total impedance, the current then given those that frequency and impedance and then the power I squared R we end up then with values that increase and then decrease. So we can see here by the graph the values increase to a peak and then start to decrease again. So pull out your calculator, run through these exercises. Again, it's just, you know, it's an exercise in doing, uh, in this case, your conversions from the actual values to the reactances. Okay, so as you can see, the power of the load peaks at a frequency, in this case of 50K, for which the load impedance is the complex conjugate of the output impedance when reactances are equal in value. In the next one we actually put in a speaker. We've got an amplifier, a coupling capacitor, and a speaker and now you can see over here in the block diagram it's modeled as the winding resistance and the coil in the speaker L. We've got a resistance in the load here, V source. They want us to determine the frequency at which a maximum power is transferred and how many watts of power are delivered. So when the power to a speaker is maximum, the output source R sub S minus J X sub C and the load impedance R of the winding plus J X sub L are the complex conjugates. So we know X sub C equals X sub L at maximum power transfer. And so we can set our two values together, 1 over 2 pi FC equal to 2 pi FL. And solving for this case, the frequency, the frequency squared then when we start moving our terms around is equal to 1 over 2 pi or 4 pi squared LC. The frequency then is 1 over 2 pi, the square root of LC. Well, we've seen that before. So we enter our values. We get a frequency of 1.59 kilohertz at the point of resonance or maximum power transfer. Calculate the power to the speakers then, Z total, R sub S plus RW, okay, the source and the winding resistances give us 16 ohms. The current then, V sub S over Z total, 
then for that 16 ohms is 3.8 volts divided by 16 ohms gives us 238 milliamps. So the power maximum I squared R is equal to 238 milliamps squared times 8 ohms, 453 milliwatts.